What's going on everyone? Welcome to the warehouse series. So today we're going to be talking about three of the most common things we injure in the warehouse. Uh, this was also a suggestion from Discord, so I appreciate it. Uh, the link for Discord is going to be in the description below. We have like 80 plus people over there and we are helping each other out every day and it's just a unique thing. So these videos are just one part of this uh, channel and the Discord is another. Uh, you know, if you're not a subscriber, if you could do that, and if you are a subscriber, if you could share my content, uh, you know, I am trying to grow this into as big as I can possibly get it. Uh, it's just going to be more feedback from you and we're just going to make this a more interesting channel. I leave comments. Any questions in the comment section below, give me a thumbs up and let's get to today's video. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, lower back pain. Uh, lower back pain is definitely the most uh, common thing in the warehouse and I have injured myself twice in the warehouse. Once was lower back and one, once was a groin. Uh, the lower back was in the beginning of my time working there, just improper lifting techniques. We had a module system with convey belts where we were just constantly bending over all day long and just continuous pain. Uh, continuous strain, I should say, is the most common thing, I think. There's no in particular time when you go to fill out your accident report, they're going to be like, what did you do? Well, it's I was picking this up, but it's been for the last five years, my back's been bothering me. So it's just continuous strain. Uh, what can we do to prevent that is stretching is the most important thing and just proper lifting techniques. Right here, you can see that in this picture, is, this is how we lift. I see so many people lifting straight over at the hips and picking that case up. And then what do you do? You pick the case up and you're away from your body. They say you can multiply that case times 10 whenever you hold it away from your body. It's so important to keep cases close to you so you're not adding any more weight onto that case that you possibly can. Uh, right here, bringing cases closer to you is so important. This is the second level with a case hook and I am bringing that case closer to me to make it easier on me. I don't wanna be reaching out and then picking it up and putting that multiple, you know, that extra weight on my back. So uh, someone did ask what our case hooks look like. That's what they look like. They're just metal tubing with a hook on the end. If your warehouse does not have them, I would suggest, uh, and you have second case, uh, second case picking, I would, uh, you know, suggest that to one of your supervisors. Uh, they were very easy to make, and then they just mounted a little bracket to hold it on our jack. Uh, on the bottom level, you see the bridging. I talked about bridging before, uh, and all of this is is supporting off of your back onto your arm and your leg and bringing that case closer to you and then picking it up as a squatting technique. Uh, people got to get in the habit of squatting when they pick up cases. Uh, another thing that people hurt themselves with their lower back is that they, uh, I don't know what it is, you know, just an ego thing. How many of these cases can I carry at one time? Uh, I see people carry eight strawberries, six peaches, stuff that is way too heavy and not to mention you get it up to here where you can't even see and then you're walking over empty pallets with it. So then you have a, a possibility of hurting your lower back, your ankle and your knee. Uh, you know, so carry what you can manage and what you could also visually see what you're where you're walking. Uh, so that's another problem is uh, the carrying too many cases. Another one is with heavy cases. Once again, people bending straight over the back. You've got to get a full squat to pick up those heavy cases. Another one is shippers. It says team lift on the shipper box, but we never get a team lift, do we? Ask the next person next to you. All right, no, no harm in that because these shippers are weird. Sometimes they're real long boxes. They only weigh 40 pounds, but all the weight will be on one side. All right, so you pick it up and then it just flops out of your hands. And yeah, not a good, not a good thing. So if there's a team lift, of, of, you know, that it says you need help carrying, you know, picking up this case and ask for help. Another thing is uh, when people's pallets are falling over, you will not believe how many people jump off their jack to try to stop their product from falling. I uh, let it fall. <laughs> that's a, unless it's a, a slow rocker, uh, but if, if it's one that's already in in stride of falling over, just let it fall because you're going to end up risking injury just trying to stop this pallet from falling. Which you're talking about fifty cases in all different directions. You're not going to stop it. All right, unless it's a tower and it's just one tower leaning. Uh, but don't hurt yourself trying to stop a pallet from falling over. Now you're risking the, the quickness of jumping off the jack. And if you have your coaster brake on, you're, you're uh, risking running into somebody and you're risking of injuring yourself while catching the product, just let it fall. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about is picking pallets off the stack. I've seen people just grab a pallet and go straight up with it. You know how much strain you're putting on your back by doing that? Slide it to you, 
and then just rock it off the stack and then slide it over. Uh, that's the best way of getting the pallets off the stack in my opinion. Uh, there's no need to pick that pallet straight up. You're just putting so much strain on your lower back. Another one I want to talk about, I'm just going through these real quick because I got a ton that I just want to go over, is running over broken wood in the warehouse. Boy, does that travel up your spine. Uh, if there's a little piece of debris on the uh, floor, please try to avoid it. Uh, it's amazing how much that would just travel up your spine. It, it's, it's pretty bad. All right, so that's the lower backs that I want to talk about. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is your knee and ankle. I'm going to group this together because the things I'm going to talk about, uh, they, have, they can relate to both uh, knee and ankle injuries. So the first thing I want to talk about is jumping off your jack. Uh, this jack does not have a coaster brake on it, but I just wanted to give you an idea. You know, you're jumping off your jack, and you have a chance of rolling your ankle or even hurting your knee. Uh, you're putting awkward, you know, thing. this jack stopped because the brake came up, but people, you know, you get that, uh, how do I want to say, when you're coasting and you jump off your jack, you're jumping off and your foot's still on your jack, so you like get this motion like this, and then you put uh, a lot of pressure on your left leg or your right leg, whichever side you're jumping off on. So you just want to be careful about jumping off your jack. Uh, another one is running over your ankle with your jack while walking next to it. Uh, people are paying attention to their pick locations and you're not paying attention to how close they are to that jack. And then they clip the side of their ankle with the jack and then they run it and then it, it buckles it. You know, it'll run it over, you know, and it, believe me, it does not feel good. Uh, another one is this right here uh, leading to the ankles is like this. People driving down the uh, aisle and they're just swinging their foot all over the place, tapping their toe on the uh, side, uh, you know, doing whatever it is without the four points of contact. You want to keep your foot on there. Uh, I make sure that I do now because there's just so many inexperienced people in the warehouse because we're hiring at an abundant rate right now and I am not trying to get my foot smashed by someone. Metal on metal is not a good thing to get <laughs> your foot in between. And unfortunately, we've had a couple of those uh, injuries in the warehouse. Uh, not many, but we've had, and you don't want it to happen. I can promise you. And the four points of contact, I'm sure the uh, trainer has told you that in the warehouse before. What am I talking about? One hand on the handle, one hand on the back next to your horn and your controllers, and your two feet on the uh, base of the jack that are not sticking off. Uh, collisions in the warehouse, uh, believe it or not, happen a lot more than they should at our warehouse because of the inexperienced selectors. Uh, you will literally uh, just clip a, a side of a person and they just keep going. It, it's, it's unbelievable what goes on in the warehouse these days uh, with all these new selectors, but just be careful. Keep those feet on the jack. Another one I wanna talk about is stepping on bad wood. Uh, I have done this multiple times where you step on a piece of wood and worse, it has a slip sheet over it. So you don't even know the wood's broken and you step on it and your foot goes right through the pallet. Uh, what can you do to prevent this is stepping on the middle of the pallet. Uh, you know, you could see the, uh, the center of the pallet has that board there. So that's a safe place to step on the pallet. And they actually train you like that. Uh, they should be to step on the middle of the pallet and not on the plank. And one of the most common things I see people trip on is debris. You could have shrink wrap, you could have wood, and you could have bands on the uh, floor. And if these bands get tucked underneath of a pallet and there's a loop sticking out and you catch that, you're done. <laughs> you, If you're walking and you got product and your foot catches this and it's sticking under a pallet, you're falling and you're going down. And I've done that once before and I've never done it again. Uh, me, when I'm on that type of job where I'm cleaning up this debris, if I can't get it out from underneath the pallet, I always cut it to make sure that there is no loop there and someone's not gonna be tripping over it. So just be careful, debris on the floor. And another one is the obvious of walking across the forks. Uh, you know, some people just don't pay attention, especially if you got your product up on the front of your jack, especially if you have a triple pallet jack. I mean, those forks have gotta be super long. Uh, so you gotta be really be, uh, really be careful of walking across your forks. Another one is the coaster break. Uh, I see this a lot lately, uh, you know, people coasting into each other. Uh, they jump off their jack, like I was saying, and you have a chance of rolling an ankle or injuring a knee. Well, you also have a, a chance of injuring the person in front of you because you're not paying attention and you jump off your jack and you coast it and that jack goes a little bit further than you thought it was going to. So always be mindful of when you get off your jack that that thing is not coasting two, three bays ahead when there's someone selecting ahead of you. So be very careful of that. Uh, of injuring the person in front of you. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, this little thing I've always had since I've been in the warehouse is always think of the worst. Uh, I think of that more now than ever because of all the inexperienced people that are in the warehouse. Uh, we will literally be driving down the main travel area of the front dock 
and it is a very congested area. The last thing you want to do is jump off your jack and go get labels. You want to make sure you're parking in an aisle somewhere or somewhere off to the side so people can keep traveling. Uh, at any given time, you can literally have 50 people traveling our main travel area on the front dock. There will be somebody driving down the thing and they just jump off their jack. So I always think of the worst. I always think when I'm driving behind someone that this person's going to stop. They're going to make a hard right. They're going to make a hard left. They're even going to make a U-turn. I've seen it all. Uh, you see it all in the warehouse. So always have that mindset of I'm thinking of the worst. You know, just always think of the worst. This person is going to go left. So I, I always beep. I'm always hesitant on my throttle. You know, I'm slowing down whenever I think that someone might cut me off. And the last thing I want to uh, close on this is a stretching. Uh, you know, I don't want to show, I, I thought that, you know, hey, I could show you my little stretching routine that I do. Uh, but my stuff that I do, uh, some of the stuff I would consider advanced stretching, uh, but everyone's different, guys. You can sit in a chair, you know, child pose is one of my favorite ones to stretch out the lower back. Uh, but some people might not be as flexible. So, I, hey, you got YouTube. I, I would really suggest going to YouTube and typing in your certain thing. You know, do you need to sit down while doing stretches or whatever it is and try to get a stretching routine. I think you should at least stretch for five minutes. Or whether you do it at work or you do it at home, I think you should stretch. Uh, when I work out, I like to try to get a stretch in after my workout too because when your body's warm, you seem to be a little bit more limber and you can get a better stretch in. So I try I to do a pre-workout uh, stretch and an after-workout stretch. And you know, when I'm in the warehouse, I try to do a little bit of stretching. Uh, so I got away with stretching for a long time and I'm trying to really be mindful of uh, you know my health. So uh, guys, there's a ton of different stretches you can do. So go to YouTube and start jotting down some stuff. Uh, make up a board, you know, get a whiteboard or something like that. These are, you know, five minute stretch. I'm gonna hold this stretch for so long and have, get, you know, get into it. Make it a routine. Make it something that you get up and you do every morning, even when you're not working. You know, it's very important to stretch. Uh, so that's what I want to close on this video on. I'm sure there's more I can talk about, uh, but you know, ankle, knee, and lower back, you got to be careful with it. I mean, people do bang their heads a lot, but it's it's not as common as the lower back, knee, and ankle. Uh, just be careful in the warehouse, especially if you're new, you're inexperienced on the equipment. Uh, you know, sometimes I ramble on when I'm talking about safety and I apologize, but it's, it's important. I know this isn't, you know, hey, this is how I should build this pallet, but these are equally important to selecting in the warehouse. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.